welcome to the 138th Annual Picnic and fun Fundraiser at Fancy Farm, Kentucky. You know, it, it really is a homecoming. Of, I mean, it, Fancy Farm is just a wonderful community. It, it always has been, um, again, dating back to 1880. My family's been involved with the picnic all those years. And if you haven't been here, you certainly need to, to come and check it out. The great thing about Fancy Farm is even though you may not go to church here, um, if you're here, you belong. And that's that's a great, great thing about this place. And it's just um, a home. It's just like going home. I think uh, anybody who hasn't come to Fancy Farm, to Fancy Farm Picnic, needs to put it on their bucket list. Uh, and come and, and observe it firsthand um, because it's uh, something truly unique. Well, it was 1880. That was the first time they got together as families, they decided they wanted to have just a gathering, and it was in the summer, it was in actually July then, it wasn't in August, and they decided to get together and just have a family picnic as a parish, and they thought it would be nice, and that's exactly what they did. So they continued it the next year. Well, the politicians from Mayfield heard about it and said, gee, I want to come down to Fancy Farm, and maybe I can politic. At that time, the primary was not at the time that it is now, so it was a good time for them to go ahead and, and come in politic at that time of the summer. And they had a forest area down through here. There was a creek that ran to, around down through here. They cut down some of the trees, those types of things. So they had some stumps left. And you've heard the old saying, stumping? That's where it came from, was people, politicians standing on the stumps, and they were trying to get the people's vote as far as that goes. Now. I would also like to welcome every political nut in Kentucky for driving here today, as well as the fake news gallery here before the stage. You know, in Fancy Farm. <laughs> you know, in Fancy Farm, it may be the only political event where the politicians get booed more than the media. The political speaking, what it does for us in Fancy Farm, of course our venue is put on by the St. Jerome Catholic Church here and it's a fundraiser for us. A lot of people don't realize that, but there's so much promotion uh, from the political event as to who's going to speak, what candidates are coming in and all that. It brings, uh, we get a lot of promotion that helps bring a lot of folks into our venue. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a huge day, 10 or 15,000 people will come here and they spend a lot of money. Not only here, but in the outlying areas. But, and I tell people it also, it's, it's an economic development tool for, not only for Fancy Farm, but we look at it from a regional basis. Uh, it's a big boon for Graves County, the Purchase area, the four state area. We have people that come in, not only from Kentucky, but Illinois, Indiana, Arkansas, Missouri. Tennessee, they come in from all over. We get a lot of calls, text, and emails from politicians all over the state, and for that matter, across the country. Everybody wants to have an opportunity to speak at our venue here at, at St. Jerome, but, and we've tried, and we've kind of had a precedent set, and this was set years ago, that we mainly just focus on who, would be on the ballot in our precinct here at Fancy Farm. Well, as far as uh, the speakers on the platform, the main thing they need to uh, get in tune with real quick is the crowd. Uh, they can be a little bit rowdy and raucous here, as we, as we all know. Father, I've been uh, preparing for my visit to the parish by performing as many confirmations as I can. Only mine are a record number of federal judges. The two reasons, the two reasons it's so great to come here, one is the barbecue, and the other is this is the only time of the year you'll see any Democrats in Western Kentucky. Kentucky. It's a hot one, folks.
people are sweating here today like Matt Bevan at a KEA meeting. It's, uh, it puts us on the map. It's a good uh, good tool for fancy farm in our region right there with the notoriety we have from this venue. It's basically the face of the picnic because a lot of people across the state that aren't from, you know, right here in West Kentucky uh, think of the fancy farm picnic as it's mostly a political picnic, which is not really the case. It's just part of the picnic. Once people come here, they just there is so much here. The politics gets all the attention in the statewide and national media. But once people get here, there's much more to our venue besides the political event. Our speaking venue only lasts about an hour and a half, but the actual picnic here at St. Jerome Parish, it starts out Friday night. We have a huge fish fry that's put on at the Knights of Columbus Hall. We have one of the better 5K runs in the four state region right over here. That's on Friday evening. All through the day on Saturday, I mean, we have a meal, all you can eat. Barbecue mutton, barbecue pork, uh, fried chicken that comes out of the black kettles, uh, homemade uh, pies, desserts, the sweet corn comes out of the local farms, the fields here. I mean, it's all you can eat. I mean, it's just a big crowd, a lot of fun. People are amazed when they see the barbecue pits down there to our right. I mean, there's 20,000 pounds of pork and mutton on them pits. I mean, we're in the Guinness Book of World's Records as the world's largest one-day picnic. But once people get here, they just, they're just they just enamored with it. It's, just, it's an anomaly. I mean, this event is one of the few in the country that even though we may not have an oak stump here on the platform, it's still known as the old time stump speaking event right here. It's an anomaly and people are just amazed, but it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just a big draw for many different reasons. Well, our role has been for years and years barbecuing, you know, doing the meat. I know back, I first barely can remember, we just had one pit and it wasn't no roof on it or nothing, you know, but I was real small. Then it just kept getting a little bigger and a little bigger. Well, my, my great uncle was the one that really, the first one I knew of that uh, barbecued out here. And we come on down and uh, my dad barbecued. My granddaddy never barbecued. People said that he did, but he did not. He had run a barbecue place in Fancy Farm and that. Then it just, <clears throat> I got out of the army and it just kindly evolved into, uh, us doing it, we started on the 99th picnic, and I think last year was 138, so we've been cooking it by ourselves for about about 40 years, 39 or 40, and uh, I know we had some people that helped us, but we were doing most of the work, and one time Mr. Bernard Hobbs, he was helping, he said, let's just cook it ourselves, and that's what we're doing. It's all family, 90% of it's family. People come in, have a good time. Each family does their own thing every year. It's just been going on for years and years, you know. You know, it's a result of a huge amount of teamwork. And there's just, it's, a, it's, it's hard to explain the culture that we have. Uh, as everybody comes back, no matter where they live, they come back, help their family who, who is still here, and uh, to put on this picnic. It's just, and it, it's amazing how everybody knows their place, they do their job, you don't have to worry about if that's going to happen or not, and, uh, um, and, and cheerfully do it. It instills some work ethic in the kids because, you know, not always everything's fun and games. Sometimes you got to grow up and be responsible and you got to have a, a job, even if that means you're not making a dime off of this, you still got to come work at the picnic. You know, uh, for us uh, church members, not only church members, but there's lots of friends and lots of uh, outside families that come in and help us at the picnic. If without them, we couldn't get it done. But, uh, you know, when they come in and help, you know, I mean, it's just a sense of fulfillment. And I want to 
to stress the money we make this weekend is plowed back into our church community. We use it to help the local folks in need. We use it for mission work. We have a crew that goes down every year to Mandeville, Jamaica. We use it for religious education programs here and other programs such as upgrades to our buildings and our grounds. So the money that we raise here is put to good use right here at St. Jerome in our community. Life revolves around the church. I mean, we kind of do everything, not only religiously, but also secularly too. I mean, all different kinds of um, gatherings and stuff, the church pulls it all together. Um, and so it has a big influence on the community. We have people, new people move into the area and join the parish. So it's not just people, you know, families that have been here for all the hundreds of years or so, but you know, um, it does have a, its own flavor in the sense that it uh, does create quite a bit of uh, good community because people know each other. Um, they know each other and their families. And um, I was talking to one of the bus drivers uh, last night and they said, you know, we know every uh, kid on our bus is parents, so it's not really that difficult to have good discipline on their bus because they know their parents. And so uh, everyone knows everybody, which is a good thing. The mass on Friday morning, uh, everybody gets here and one father gives a, a, has mass and then we go down to the barbecue pits and bless the meat. And to me, that's always like the kickoff. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I think it's, it's grown in so many ways, uh, just the number, the volume of people that come. But the other thing that has grown is we feed many, many more people, obviously. It was just a small family picnic. Now we feed thousands upon thousands of people who come here to eat. Uh, we, we barbecue 19,000 pounds of barbecue to help do that. It's one of the main things at the picnic. A lot of people, they don't get mutton very often, you know. Once or twice a year, you got St. Dennis and St. Charles, they cook it and we cook it. That's one of the main things. That's really the backbone of the uh, picnic, you know, that and the meal. And you can't, really, you can't pick out anything for sure, but, you know, uh, that's what a lot of people come for is the mutton and especially the, I mean, for the mutton and the pork both, you know. And after we get it, just when we get the pork, uh, mutton on and while we're putting the pork on, we have so many people that will start uh, putting uh, fires under it. We have these barrels that are down in the far end, but uh, as soon as we get here that morning, we start the fires, you know, so we'll have them as soon as we get the mutton on. We'll have that, and as we get the pork on, we just come on through and do the pork. And then uh, about every hour and a half to two hours, we let them uh, pits, I mean the barrels burn down. You want, we fill them up three times. And uh, of course, you've got a pile of uh, coals in there. We just shovel them around the edge, you know. We've got so many it works that end, and so many it works this end, and we meet in the middle, you know, because everybody knows what they're doing. They've done it for years, my brothers, my friends, we have people come in from, I've got relatives come in from Boston, you know, to help us. And uh, about six o'clock at night, we start uh, putting uh, the barbecue sauce on it. It's a vinegar base, and we've got uh, things that uh, we put it in, and we put air in it, and we just go down through there just to spread it. We don't lose no heat, hardly at all, and you get a good coating on it. And that you do that uh, four or five times during the night, You know, from, from a very young age, the first thing you do is you play in the sawdust underneath the, underneath the table with little uh, Tonka trucks and stuff, so you do that. And then as you're able to, to, um, to get sauce and get uh, buns, you put those up on the shelves. You, you write whether it's a mutton or pork on the, uh, on the uh, styrofoam uh, container. So that, you know, I, it's just every year, I've, I'm 38 years old and I've been going to the picnics for 38 years. And so each year you kind of progress up to the next job. And then ultimately you get to grab a hold of that meat cleaver and start chopping on the table. And that's exciting to do. Uh, serving at the window, you know, asking people what they want. Um, it, it's just going and going to the pits with the wheelbarrow and seeing them load that, you know, pork and mutton on that. That's exciting. Um, just being able to serve. I mean, we're all about serving in St. Jerome and, and 
That's what I love the most. A lot of times, when I was younger, uh, a lot of my friends, I would help them barbecue all night long, and we had some good times staying up, just talking, and just, you know, we were wore out for picnic day, but we had a good time, you know, the night before getting everything prepared, so. Well, you know, it's, from my standpoint, it's for the last, it's, as from through my adulthood, it's basically, I'm working, I'm doing something, so I'm working the entire time. But uh, my favorite thing to do is get a mutton sandwich. That is my favorite outcome of the picnic. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll make sure, I've had three today so far. My favorite thing is late at night to get a hamburger <laughs> from the hamburger stand. It just tastes good at the end of a long day, about eight o'clock at night. And that, that's, that's one of my favorite things that I like to do, believe it or not. It's been, it's, it's been a long day the whole day and you just kind of get to munch on a good old greasy hamburger. Then I like a good old uh, bar, I mean a picnic hamburger too. I don't know, there's just something about them that they're, they just taste better than they do to go over to any restaurant I've ever been to, you know. But uh, I like the mutton and uh, then I like I always get me a, a hamburger. And we, a lot of times, if we run out of meat early, like we do a lot of times at four o'clock or five, we do the, we've got a cooker down here and we cook uh, hamburgers and hot dogs for them, you know, because they can't keep up because they don't have any meat, you know, and everybody's wanting a hamburger or something, you know, but that's, we usually sell out. I think last year we might've had two or three shoulders left, you know, but that's it. Oh man, uh, all the food, all the barbecue coming right off the pits, uh, the home cooked meals. But I have to say, a lot of the people come in from all over, our family members, friends from all over, just seeing everybody, it's like a big family re reunion again. But it's just, it's just a great day. No other way to describe it for us. It brings everybody together. You know, I wanted this thing to go on forever. You know, it's been going on, like I say, for 138 years, and I hope it continues. We try to bring, and everybody here try to bring their younger ones up with what we're doing and give, make them or give the, you know, I want them to, to be proud of uh, the picnic and keep it going for generations to come, you know. And it's everybody, it's like a homecoming. Like I say, I've got people comes in all over the country, and everybody else does too, you know. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a good thing for the community to get together. It's a, like I say, it's a homecoming. I think the picnic itself is more about creating unity than it is about raising money. It raises money, and that's a I think that's a definitely a positive that comes from it. But really and truly, it's when people come together and have unity to pull off an event such as this in such a small town, honestly, I think that's probably the biggest benefit from it is the, the sense of community and unity that it builds within the people who take care of putting on the picnic and the whole town coming together to do that. Well, I mean, we just always enjoy everyone coming, whether, you know, young, old, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's something here for everybody. You know, uh, it's always hot, but it always seems to be uh, very pleasurable weather, you know, during our picnic. And uh, even if it is hot, people still come. Even if it's raining, people still come. Uh, they want to see what it's about if they hadn't been here. I'd be surprised at how many first time people just walking around or, you know, never been, wanted to come, always heard about it, you know, uh, and you still have, you know, uh, you hear the stories about people. So I remember the first time I came and I haven't missed one since, you know, uh, a lot of people like to see a community effort like this, all volunteer. I mean, everything is strictly volunteer done, nobody gets paid, you know, I mean, you know, we have to, we do have to pay for the stuff that we're selling and the food that we're cooking and stuff, but, but
basically everything's done on a volunteer basis, all the work. So, you know, it's for something to be such a, a magnitude of what we pull off here and be all, uh, you know, just showing up and getting your job done, you know, it's pretty amazing. That's what, that's what I like about the picnic the most. I, walk, I like to walk around and talk to people and see who all this comes in. It's people coming in all day long. I see people that come in from other areas of the diocese that I know from other parishes that I've been assigned to and know in Owensboro. And so it's a time to visit, you know, with people. And then I may work a shift in the bingo uh, stand. And then um, I enjoy the eating. The food is really good. And uh, so I enjoy just spending time with people like that, too. favorite part just because I'm an educator is seeing former students and what they're doing because I know most all of them are coming home for the picnic and so for me it's just being able to visit with them and see uh, what they've done with their life since elementary school. Seeing everybody out here like putting the meat on, seeing everybody here helping, you know nobody's grappling, nobody says anything. You know, everybody's joking and carrying on. Little ones, we put them in wheelbarrows, you know, with the paper that in it, not the little ones, but the meat. And they're even, you know, helping their daddies, you know, and that. And it's just, it, it, it's just nice to see all the young ones and the old ones come together and, and put on a, a heck of a picnic. Growing up, I can remember the, the dish throw used to fascinate me and they used to pile these dishes up and it, you would throw a nickel on the dish and you would try to win that dish and it was just a neat thing to throw the nickel and as a little kid you know you, you try to go on top of the rail and that type of thing and uh, that just always fascinated me that if, if it landed on a dish you could you could get that dish the other one that i and i still love it today the Elliot's run the cane stand and that was always my favorite growing up. Uh, trying to, again, throw something on the cane and try to win a cane. And that, so that's, those are my fondest memories. When I was a young kid, uh, our job, uh, some of the Wilsons was the lemonade stand. It was down on the uh, north end of the picnic grounds. And that's when they'd bring in truckloads of oak, oak uh, planks and we'd nail them up to the trees and stuff. But, Myself and my cousins, we would help our parents and, and uncles and stuff, but yeah, we did uh, the hand squeeze lemonade and finally evolved to the lemonade in the little cartons back in. We had a lot of fun, me and my cousins, helping out in that right there, but that's just so many good memories here. I mean, all of them are good memories. The memories of uh, when I was younger, uh, when I was a little kid, we'd run around, my cousins and I, we'd have squirt gun fights and we'd go get canes and, and we just had a, had the best time. And then as a, as a teenager, uh, this was a place where all the teenagers, the boys and girls got together. Uh, I, I, uh, my wife, I've, uh, she and I really, uh, you know, got started getting serious uh, here at the picnic. And then, um, and then as I got older, my favorite memory is when my grandkids come and they want the picnic money, and I give them their money to go spend at the picnic, just like my grandparents did and, and my dad did, and, and uh, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of, it comes as, as in stages as you grow through life. I think the most important thing is the family, and no matter where you are, uh, at, at this day and age across the world, across the United States. If you're from Fancy Farm, if you have a relation to Fancy Farm, uh, you may not have been born here, but your, your grandparents were, or that type of thing, you're gonna make it back here that particular day, the first Saturday in August, to be a part of this picnic, to help with this picnic in any way you can. Might not be a big way, but at least you've contributed something because I think that's the biggest thing that I see today is that it, it brings us together as a family and brings family together for reunions and those types of things. And if it weren't for all the people that come back, we wouldn't be able to, and our, and our neighbors, and volunteers, that type of thing, we wouldn't be able to put this picnic on. Well, I always say that 
it's a homecoming more than anything. Uh, people that have different lives now than when they grew up in Fancy Farm. They might have moved off because of a job or a spouse, uh, uh, you know. Lots of different things lead people away from the town, uh, but your heart's always here and everybody wants to come back, see all your old friends, all your family, uh, just get together because you know everybody's coming, you know, if they can. And, uh, you know, it's kind of something, you know, in today's busy life, everybody's got hectic schedules. It's hard to get everybody on the same page, you know, meeting up and getting to see all your old friends and stuff and family. So everybody pretty well knows the first Saturday in August, you know, you can see everybody that you want to see at the picnic.